Hey guys, I'm Justin with americantrucks.com and welcome to our utility build here with the F-150. Now what is a utility build? Well, to get a better idea of that, let's break down the meaning of the word utility. And when used as an adjective, it means useful through being able to perform several different functions. So that's the goal here today with our 2016 EcoBoost rig. One thing this video will not be is how to build a work truck because the reality is an electrician will use his truck differently from a plumber who will then use his truck differently from a carpenter. So trying to build an all encompassing work truck really just isn't the best idea. Instead, we're gonna build the Swiss army knife of F-150s. Now, again, keep in mind guys, the truck that we are using, 2016 Super Cab F-150 with the six and a half foot box. Yes, it already is lifted slightly through a zone lift kit in addition to the fuel wheels and tires, but try not to pay attention to that because the reality is all of the parts we've selected for this build will basically bolt up to any 2015 and newer rig. We've got some parts that'd be a little smaller in the grand scheme of things, some parts that will play a bigger role, but altogether, guys, this build is the sum of all its parts. So with that said, let's get to work. Well, my buddy Nick and I just finished up with the barricade Rattler sidestep. Check these guys out, man. Very industrial looking, 14 gauge stamp steel, so a burly step. And you got traction the length of your cab here, which I really like. And on top of that, six and a half inches of width. You're not gonna have to worry about losing your footing, especially on a rainy or snowy day. Honestly, these things feel pretty sturdy overall. I mean, 220 pounds of solid muscle and twisted steel not even budging these things one bit. But even for the back passengers, you know, you got some footing there. And even with the doors closed, which can sometimes be a testament to some added footing, and they're still nice. So if you eventually have to access the roof there, you do have some footing. And again, I really like these little nubs on the step, very solid. And for a size 12 boot, a lot of footing for sure. I really like these steps, about 300 bucks for the pair. And they install super easily, which is nice as well. But we got a lot of stuff going on in the back. In fact, probably the majority of this build is gonna be found in the bed area. So let me stop talking and get to it. All right, so Nick and I are just finishing up installing the Hauler Racks 1,000 pound aluminum bed rack here for this utility build. And honestly, guys, I can't think of a better part to be used for a utility build like this because let's face it, you can do a million different things with a rack like this. If you're a carpenter, general contractor, hauling lumber, ladders, uh, piping, whatever on top of the rack, or if you're using it for the weekend with the family, tossing a canoe, kayak, whatever on top of the rack, and you still have your entire bed to use for mulch, material, whatever the case, really frees up a lot of space and just makes the truck a little bit more versatile. I also like this because you can throw a toolbox into the mix if you wanted to and move the rack around on the bed a little bit. You're not really chained to one location. So very useful rack. Again, a thousand pound capacity. You can throw whatever the hell you want on this thing. If the kids are misbehaving, hell, throw them up there too. Get them out of the truck for a little bit. But honestly, a very nice rack. One thing to point out though, guys, this is a drill-in option. And yes, these things are aluminum. Which brings us to our little science lesson for today. Because this is a drill-in rack, you have to be mindful of something called galvanic corrosion, especially with an aluminum truck like this. So basically what that means is you don't want to use a raw or uncoated steel bolt with an aluminum bed. When things get wet, bad things start happening, and that's what you want to avoid, especially on your brand new truck. So the solution is either use similar materials, so an aluminum screw into an aluminum bed, problem is aluminum screws really don't hold that much weight. So the solution is uh, Hauler Racks gave us some zinc plated stainless hardware for this bed rack. It's the next best thing and should help prevent that galvanic corrosion that we want to avoid. So Nick and I are going to finish installing this thing. We're just about there, but then we got some other small and useful bits for this build that you guys should check out. Well guys, as you can see, the Hauler Racks 1,000 pound capacity rack is in place now with our utility build, but we've come to a bit of a conundrum here, throwing stuff on top of this thing. And I know we're not doing ourselves any favors with this four inch lift on our F-150, but it's a problem a lot of you guys might encounter at home as well. Now if you wanna throw some stuff on top, luckily again, we threw the Rattler side steps on, certainly makes life a little easier that way. Or God bless you, you can try to climb up onto the 35, 
that could end badly, especially with a slick tire. So the next best solution, check it out guys. Amp Research Bed Step 2. This thing is great, especially on the six and a half foot bed box. Five and a half foot bed, you might have a little bit more access thanks to your sidestep, but this thing solves a common problem. So come on up here, throw your stuff on the rack, get anything out of your bed mounted toolbox, and it really just makes life a whole lot easier without having to do any truck yoga, as I like to call it. And once you're done with it, simply kick it up and out of the way. I really dig this thing a lot. You can mount it to either side of your truck. It's universal, so if it makes more sense to have it on that side for toolbox reasons or whatever, totally can do that. And on top of that, it supports up to 300 pounds, backed by a three-year warranty. And it's enough for, again, a size 12 boot to comfortably fit up there. You can also kind of tweak it on the bracket as well. So we have the 35 on here again. Made a little bit more sense for us to kick it to this side. That's what we did. And once it's stored up and out of the way, you can barely see it. So a smaller piece overall with the utility build, but definitely something that is needed once you toss a rack onto this thing, especially for my lifted F-150s out there. But our next part we have in line, guys, is something I'm really excited about. I handpicked it for this build, and I think you guys are gonna dig it as well. So let's get to work installing that thing. So this is the part I was really excited to show you guys. Nick's humping away on this thing. It's the Vi Air onboard air system for basically any 97 and newer F-150. Now onboard air has a ton of different uses from air horns to air suspension for the rear. If you do a lot of towing, you can re-air some tires. If you're going off road a lot, you air down, air them back up. You don't have to stop at a fill station or you can even power some smaller air tools as well. Two and a half gallon tank, uh, 150 max PSI. So again, with the whole utility build thing in mind, this was a perfect fit for our build. Now, we're actually installing it underneath the truck right now. You can mount this in a few different spots. Uh, if you have an enclosed toolbox in the bed, maybe up there. What we're actually doing is installing it where the spare tire was because we have a 35 on here. The stock spare is basically useless for us anyway. So we're gonna get a full size spare eventually for the bed and that makes for a perfect location for the compressor along with the tank itself here. So again, really excited to get this part on our utility build. Nick's gonna do an awesome job finishing this thing up and we'll show you in action when everything's all wrapped up. Well, check it out guys, Nick absolutely killed the install of the onboard air system here for our utility build. You saw where the tank and the compressor went in the spare tire area, but check this out, how cool is this? He actually put the coupler out of the little spare tire keyhole area. Very, very cool stuff. You can kind of flush mount that in there, but for the purpose of this video, we just wanted to show you how it all worked. We also have our gauge and switch down here as well kick on your compressor just that easily. Now, you can actually install that inside the cab if you want, but me personally and Nick, we both agreed that installing it on the outside of the truck, especially back here, just makes more sense because this is where you're gonna be when you're hooking up your airline to do whatever it is you need to do, which leads us to our next point. This thing has a million and one uses. Yes, obviously airing tires up makes the most sense, and the company feels that way as well as they ship it to you with the chuck on the end of the airline. However, we popped this sucker off and screwed on a standard quarter inch coupler, and that basically opens this thing up to a number of possibilities. <laughs> Throw on your favorite air tool. You can change out a wheel real quick if you want. Basically, the sky's the limit at this point. We have another air chuck on a quarter inch receiver uh, and coupler. So really, really useful thing. I don't have this for my truck now, but this has kind of sold me on having this. So I might be looking into one of these systems for my own rig at home. But very cool. Again, great to have on a utility build like this. But we got one more little small thing to do back here. And then from there, we're gonna start moving inside the truck and then up front and wrap this sucker up. Now towing and pickup trucks pretty much go hand in hand together. So with our utility build here, it made perfect sense to include some kind of towing apparatus specifically for this build. So that's why we're talking about the WaySafe hitch. Now this is their two inch receiver version, six inch drop, which made a lot of sense for our small lift here with our F-150. But they do make these things in a number of different configurations, anywhere from a four to a 10 inch drop and uh, different kind of capacities. This is the 10,000 pounder, so we're getting a two inch and a two and five sixteenths inch ball. Now the biggest thing to keep in mind when towing for the casual tower is tongue weight because too much or not enough can equal disastrous results and just basically be very unsafe while on the road. 
Now in the past, to figure out your tongue weight, you'd basically have to do a math equation to get it all dialed in. Well, Waysafe came up with a really cool solution here to help you kind of quickly and on the fly determine if your rig is safe to tow. So by determining the amount of tongue weight here with the built-in scale, you're basically good to go to help eliminate trailer sway and just make for a much safer experience overall. Now, if you got too much tongue weight, basically your load's too far forward, you'll put it right in the red there and that's not what you want because obviously that's very unsafe. So it just helps owners like myself or like you guys watching at home who might not tow all the time determine if your load is safe to tow. So very nice product, billet aluminum for the shank and everything here, stainless steel ball. Again, a two inch stainless steel ball for about 8,000 pounds. We got the 10,000 pounder on right now. It's a two and five sixteenths option. And when you put this guy in, obviously be smart, use a locking pin because someone might see this and think, wow, that's a nice hitch and try to take it from you unless you have the proper stuff. So really, really nice product. Again, if you're doing a lot of towing for a utility build, this will help you get the job done and get it done safely. All right, so we got cool stuff going on in the back. We have one more cool thing to show you up front, but in the meantime, we figured we'd make a pit stop here in the interior and just show you a couple of cool parts that we really like that add some extra functionality to the interior of your F-150. The first of which is very cool. This is the Duha Underseat Storage Box. Now, not only does it have a pretty cool name, but it's a very functional, very versatile part. You can put all kinds of stuff in this thing, tools, recovery gear, cleaning supplies, and for all my hunters out there, you can actually fit two long rifles in this thing. Now, obviously we don't wanna bring in a real gun for HR purposes, so I brought in my trusty Red Rider, and as you can see, it fits rather well. A big fan of these things because again, as someone who has a lot of miscellaneous junk in the back seat of my F-150, it tends to roll around a lot, end up all over the floor. So it's a great way to keep things organized for just over hundred bucks. They have them in a bunch of different colors to match different interiors, and they do actually secure to the metal seat belt brackets in your rig. So again, you're not gonna have to worry about this thing sliding all around on you. And when the seats are folded down, very inconspicuous. Big fan of the Duha. On top of that, guys, well, listen, it's a truck, it's a utility build. You're gonna be getting things dirty, muddy, snow, sand, whatever, and to keep all of that junk off your carpet, what better way to toss in some exact contour mats from the gang over at Husky. I've had these exact same liners in my personal F-150 for a couple of years. Really big fan, they fit the floor perfectly, laser measured, made in the USA, all that and more. Really, really good product, and again, just about 100 bucks worth of front. And speaking of the front, guys, again, one more part we have to show you up there. I'm a big fan, and that's gonna wrap up our utility build, so let's get to it. Last but not least for our utility build, check this thing out, guys. The Iron Cross RS front bumper. Now, not only does this thing look completely badass here on our EcoBoost rig, but it's packing a whole lot of functionality. Why? Well, look a little closer and you'll see the two inch class three receiver right there, basically opening this thing up to a world of possibilities. Snow plows, winch mounts, cargo carriers, uh, steps. You can even flat tow this damn thing if you want, all thanks to that two inch receiver. And some guys actually like pushing trailers around the yard a little bit easier going forward rather than backing them in. But with this bumper, they even throw some holes up front for your front plate if your state requires one. But aside from packing all that functionality, just a really, really cool looking piece, right? 10 gauge steel throughout here. Again, absolutely bulletproof. God help the deer that you run into on the highway with this thing in place because he will certainly be on the losing end of that battle. And then finished off in this really cool textured satin black powder coat. And the RS series, one of the big draws with that is that it's a really slim steel bumper. You see some of those other ones out there and they're huge, just sticking out everywhere, bulging. That's not really the case here at the Iron Cross tucks up nicely, uh, fits very much like a factory piece, and just rock solid. So again, a very cool looking bumper and one that does pack a whole lot of functionality and the perfect cherry on top for our utility build here with our EcoBoost. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up our utility build here with our lifted EcoBoost F-150. Now using a combination of pretty simple parts overall, I think we've made this rig a little bit more functional, a little bit more versatile, and as a result, it should be better equipped to take on just about any task you can throw at it, whether it be work, play, or maybe a combination of both. Now, if you want any more information on any of the parts listed in this build, feel free to check them out on our site, of course. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so, and for all things F-150, keep it right here at AmericanTrucks.com.